Presumably, the, the, the buses are much more frequent in the term time, yeah, are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And also, the online schedules, for some reason, don't always show me the right time. Right. So I look at it, it says five minutes, like, I'm going to go. And I walk out, and it says two minutes, one, due, and it disappears. You know, I check it on the phone. Yeah. Because on my bus stop, there's no display. Right. Right, uh, ready when you are. At this stage, um, we need to just look at quite a simple topic, really. Um, we need to look at linear inequalities, which for some of you may be partly revision of what you did at GCSE. But uh, in order to go on to the harder questions on the inequalities, you need to be absolutely clear about the skills needed in dealing with inequality signs. Uh, the first one here, um, very straightforward. They behave basically like ordinary linear equations. So if, if this was an equation here, we would subtract 2x from each side, and we would also subtract 3 from each side. So we'd end up with 2x less than negative 4, divide through by 2, and we have the answer that x is less than negative 2. And that's the answer. And if we were looking at a number line, then you could represent that by uh, an open circle because 2 is not negative 2 is not included, and you could shade that back there. So that would represent the solution of that equation. The second one, supposing you tried to do the same thing. So we'll take 4x from each side, and we'll then add 7 to each side. So we get negative 3x greater than or equal to 10. Now at this point you have to be really careful. We're dividing by negative 3. Now if this was an ordinary equation, there'd be no problem. You'd write down x equals negative 10 over 3. It isn't. It involves an inequality sign. And when you divide an inequality sign by a negative number, you have to change the direction of it round. So if we divide this by negative 3, we have to change that round to x is less than or equal to negative 10 over 3. Not really difficult to understand, because if you think of um, two numbers, we know that 4 is less than 8. But of course, if I divide by negative 1, it would be rather silly to say negative 4 is less than negative 8, which it, which it clearly isn't, and we'd have to swap the inequality round. So remember that when you divide or multiply an inequality by a negative sign, you change uh, its direction. And again, if we wanted to pop that onto our number line, we'll try and do it in a different colour. Again, this time it includes negative 10 over 3, so you'd actually have a blob at negative 10 over 3, and you'd have that like that. Now let's look at this one here. So I'll do this down here to give myself enough room to finish off the other question. This is what I like to call a sandwich inequality three parts to it, something sandwiched in between two others. And you'll see when we come to the fourth one that this is a completely different sort of sandwich to number four. The reason for that is that x only appears in the middle part. So all I need do is to take four away from each part. So if I take four away from each part, I get negative seven, less than 3x, less than or equal to 3. Now I divide everything by 3, negative 7 over 3, less than x, less than or equal to 1. So the answer is itself a sandwich inequality. And on the number line, it would go from minus 7 over 3 to 1. 
It includes one, so we'd have a blob here. It doesn't include that one, so we have a circle. And if you want, you can thicken up the line like that. OK, straightforward, but do follow the rules. Now this type, X is appearing all over the place. And that's much more tricky to work out. So we have to uh, break the thing down in, into simpler bits. So we first of all look at that bit. So for that bit, 2x plus 1 less than x plus 11. So if I take x from each side, I get x. And if I take 1 from each side, I get that x has to be less than 10. Now, look at this part. So if I look at that part, x minus 2 less than 2x plus 1. Take x from each side, take 1 from each side, and I get that. Now these are not independent because the whole thing is joined together. So this says that x has to be more than minus 3, but this also says that x has to be less than 10. So the final answer then would be a situation going from negative 3, not inclusive, up to 10, again, not inclusive, thicken it up if you want written out as an algebraic statement, that will be negative 3 less than x less than 10. So once again, the answer to this part is a sandwich. OK, so those four examples really cover all of the types of linear inequality that you will meet in Core 1. Not difficult to solve, providing you follow the rules. OK, Mary, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? OK, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. OK, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, OK, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.